Hello, as you come in, if you would begin to tag and share grace and peace to everybody. Grace and peace to everybody. Um, grace and peace to everybody. I am trying. Grace and peace to everybody as you're coming in on tonight. If you would just tag and share. Tag and share in the name of Jesus. Um, this is Dr. Shakira's McFadden uh, 17th night of her revival. And I am honored to have the privilege to, uh, to even be considered in the name of Jesus. Um, to even be considered... Uh, I am trying to, <laughs> it's been so long, it's been so long, but if you would tag and share on tonight, I just believe God is going to do something on tonight that he just expect the unexpected on tonight. I am trying to, okay. Expect the unexpected on tonight. I believe God is going to move like never before on tonight. Again, this is Dr. McFadden, Shakira McFadden. This is her 17th night of her online revival that the Lord placed upon her heart to do on tonight. I am so humbled to be considered in the name of Jesus. And on tonight, we are just going to go before the throne. I need for you to tag. I need for you to share. Get everybody on this live on tonight because the word of the Lord is sure. And I know it is a rhema word. I know I am the first partaker of the word on tonight. So if you would tag and share, tag and share. Let's get it up. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. Come expecting a miracle. Come expecting answers. Come expecting God to do what only God can do in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. We honor Dr. Shakira McFadden. She is on the live on tonight. We honor you, woman of God. And again, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present my gift uh, to, your, to the people of God. Um, on tonight. Thank you for being considered in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. If you would begin to tag and share, tag and share. Hey, Kalia, Michelle, I see you guys coming on. I see you coming on on tonight. I promise you this word. God has been, uh, and he has placed this in my belly since Friday. Well, really since Thursday. I was supposed to do the live on Friday, but some things happened. And so the woman of God, we pushed it back until today. And I'm telling you, it was for a reason. And I just thank God for his obedience. Hey, Nicole, I see you guys coming in. Miss Gentile, Miss Brenda, Prophetess Brenda Bronway, I honor you, woman of God. Glory be to God. Thank you for stopping in on tonight. To everybody that's coming on, if you let me know you're here, I can say hello. Prophet Majors, Latre Majors, I honor you, man of God. God bless you. God bless you. If you would begin to tag and share on tonight, y'all already know I don't take long. We're going to go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the opportunity, God, just to go before your throne on today. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as your people get what they need, God, on tonight, God, we say thank you. As, your, as you do what only you can do, God, we say thank you, Father God. Now, God, on tonight, God, we bind up. The, the demons, the, the imps of the airwaves in the mighty name of Jesus that may try to come and, and tamper with this live on tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind it up right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Allow your people, God, to get what they need on tonight, God. Give them the answers that they need on tonight, God. Give them the revelation that they need on tonight, God. Give them the freedom that they need on tonight, God. Give them the breakthrough that they need on tonight, God. Give them the revelation, God, that they need on tonight and as you do God what only you can do God we say thank you God in Jesus name amen and as I was in prayer in the mighty name of Jesus the spirit of the Lord took me to Jonah 
So I said, well, God, why are you taking me to Jonah? Now, the theme for this conference, this revival is guilty as charged. So I said, well, what does this have to do with Jonah, God? What does this has to do? The, the theme has to do with Jonah. So God says, let my people know that there is redemption after the right. So let me break that down to you in the name of Jesus. In Jonah chapter 1, God, uh, Jonah, uh, Jonah went uh, because God petitioned Jonah. God gave Jonah an assignment to do. And what happened was, in the name of Jesus, I bind up every person that may be trying to come against this um, live on tonight. This word shall come out fluently in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, what Jonah did, the Lord gave Jonah an assignment. And the assignment was to go out, Jonah. Go out, arise, and go out and, and speak and, and let my people know about the evil that they're doing in the country, in the city. So, and this is in Jonah chapter one, and I'm paraphrasing on tonight. And so in the name of Jesus. And so as Jonah, Jonah began to run because Jonah did not want to fulfill the assignment uh, that God had given him to fulfill. So in Jonah chapter one, it tells you how the Lord told Jonah to arise. And then it goes on to say that Jonah went out to a whole nother part. He went all the way to the other side because he did not want to go forth. He did not want to deliver the word in the name of Jesus that God had told him to deliver. So what Jonah did instead was Jonah got up. And he ran. And so J Jonah ran so far. He ran to where he saw some sailormen. Some sailormen and the, the, some captain, the captain of the ship. And what he did was he went to them. And he paid the fare just to get on and go somewhere else in the name of Jesus. Because Jonah was just trying to run. He did not want to go and fulfill the assignment that God gave him to fulfill. So what Jonah did was he ran all the way to the other side. And he caught the first ship that he see in sailing. So as Jonah was on this ship, the word tells us that the ship began, it was a storm that came out in the sea. There was a storm that came and in the storm, it, it, the waves and, and, and everything, it was just a raging storm to, to where the ship and everything began to fall apart. And in your time, you can go and read it, but for time's sake, I'm just paraphrasing right now in the name of Jesus. And so what Jonah did was, Jonah, he, he, he went out in the ship and because of his disobedience, because he began, he ran from God wherever Jonah went in this particular text, he went on the ship. So where he went, he caused the chaos to follow him. So while he was on the ship, what happened was the ship, the storm began to rage and the ship got broken into pieces and uh, the people on the ship, the marines on the ship, they got afraid and, and the captain of the ship and everybody was afraid that was on the ship except for Jonah. So what the captain did was the captain went and looked for Jonah and he found Jonah all the way down to the bottom of the ship sleeping in the name of Jesus and as he was sleeping. He, 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 was, he went fast to sleep. So they woke Jonah. The captain woke Jonah up and the captain said to Jonah, who are you? What trouble have you brought to my ship? What trouble have you brought? What trouble is following you? You got to be careful what you are connected to. You got to be careful who you are connected to because the wrong connection can bring about a storm that you're not even prepared for, a storm that don't even belong to you. So, so I just wanted to throw that in there. So what Jonah did was he, he woke up. And he told the captain, well, captain, I, 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 I am. I, he, the captain asked, well, who do you worship? So Jonah said, I worship, I worship God, the Lord and Savior, the one who created the heaven and the earth, the, the sea and the dry land, the, the birds of the sea, the birds of the air, the, the fish of the sea. This is who I worship. And so what Jonah did was he began to let them know about his God and who he worshiped. But the sailormen, they were so afraid of the storm because the way the text of described the, the storm in the Message Bible, it's more detailed in the Message Bible. But in the King James Version, it's more 
you know, more traditional, but in the Message Bible, it's more 21st century. And in the Message Bible, it lets you know that it was raging. The storm was raging. The book, the, the ship got torn into pieces and, 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 and the water was inside of the ship. And it just described more, a whole lot better to where we can understand more 21st century. So what happened was, as Jonah was on the ship and all of this was going on on the ship what happened was the lord the the, the sailor man said to jonah who is your lord could you tell your lord to, to cause the storm to cease uh, to stop the storm because we by this time jonah had let them know well that he is after me i am the cause of this storm now trust me i'm going somewhere with this i am just trying to break down the text so you can know exactly what i'm where i'm coming from so as he sat inside of the, the ship and he began to tell the sailor men, he told them that, hey, I am, I am the cause of the storm. It's because I ran from the Lord. I was disobedient. See, Jonah know why he was being chased. He knew exactly what was going on. So what happened was the sailor men, the captain of the ship, told Jonah, well, hey, you need to get off the ship. You need to do something, but you need to tell your God to, to stop the storm. You know, we're innocent. We have nothing to do with you running from the Lord. So what Jonah did was Jonah said, well, how about y'all just cast me into the sea? And once y'all cast me into the sea, maybe, just maybe the storm would cease. So the, the so what happened was the sailor men, they, they cast, and the paraphrase, fast forward, they cast Jonah into the sea. And as Jonah was in the sea, the storm ceased. The storm sees, listen, let, let me, I'm here to let you know on tonight that there is, there is redemption after the storm. There is redemption after the run. Cause see, while Jonah was in the sea, the Lord ordered this big old fish, this big whale to come and swallow Jonah. So what the, what the whale did was the whale swallowed Jonah, swallowed Jonah for three days and nights. And as he was in this whale, Jonah called it the grave place. He began to have a little talk with Jesus. And as he was talking to the Lord, he began to pray to the Lord. And Jonah chapter two, it talks about the prayer and how he was talking to the Lord and telling the Lord how he how he repents for running and not doing what thus says the Lord. So on on the third day, the the the, the whale sprue Jonah out of his mouth onto dry land. And so after that, after Jonah was sprue out of the whale's mouth, spit out of the whale's mouth onto dry land. Jonah went out and tried to fulfill what the Lord had told him what to do. So I want to let you know on tonight that even though you may be in your dark place, even though you may be in your grave experience as Jonah described it in the text. There is redemption after the run. See, Jonah, he ran. He tried to run from the assignment. He tried to run from what God had told him to do. And so what happened was God had to shake him up some. God had to let him know, no, I chose you. I called you to go into the city and speak, and speak to the city about the wickedness that they are doing. And so what happened was Jonah did not want to speak speak against uh, the wickedness what they were doing but in the message bible it tells us that the lord was tired uh, he was tired of the sin uh, he was tired of the wickedness that was on the land in the name of jesus uh, and he wanted jonah to go out and speak uh, and let them know about what is going on in the name of jesus uh, and God want me to let you know on tonight uh, that there is redemption after the run. Uh, redemption after the run. So while Jonah was in his dark place, uh, while he was in his grave experience, uh, while he was in the valley, as he was talking in the prayer, if you read the prayer, as he was talking, he was saying, he was describing the, the, the ocean and how the bottom pit of it had looked uh, and how the inside of the whale had looked. And he was describing it. And as Jonah was talking and I was reading, I placed myself there. And I said, well, Lord, 
I may not be in the bottom of an ocean, a physical ocean. Oh, I may not be inside the belly of a whale, but God, some of us on tonight, we are in our grave experience. We are in a place where we feel like there is nowhere out. We are in a place where we feel there is no redemption, but God is saying on tonight in the name of Jesus that there is redemption after the run. But what you must first do, you must first acknowledge you must first acknowledge, just like Jonah did. Jonah acknowledged what it was that he needed to do. He acknowledged what it was that he did do and what he didn't do. And so what happened was, what happened was in the name of Jesus, hey, what happened was, I'm trying to get through this message without prophesying, but what happened was in the name of Jesus, Jonah got to some sense in his mind, and Jonah made up in his mind that I don't care about the opinions of people, I'm not going to worry about who is walking with me, I am not going to worry about who is against me, I'm not going to worry about what they got to say all the naysayers he made up in his mind that while he was in the belly of the whale while he was in his grave experience while he was in the pit while he was there at Sokoro Babanse Eramamansoa Jonah made up in his mind that I am going to do what the Lord had told me to do I am going to do what the Lord had told me to do I am going to uh, I am going to go to that city uh, I'm not going to run no more see what happened was uh, because of Jonah disobedience uh, he could have caused some innocent people uh, to lose their life uh, because of Jonah disobedience uh, he could have caused uh, people uh, not to agree to come to redemption uh, he could have caused people uh, not to fall and repent uh, because of his disobedience uh, Jonah could have lost his own life uh, but God is saying on tonight uh, there is redemption after the run uh, and what it is that you need to do on tonight uh, what you need to do is repent uh, you need to tell the Lord forgive me uh, oh God forgive me uh, I didn't trust you uh, I believe what the doctor said uh, I didn't stand on your word uh, because your word says uh, that by your stripes we are healed uh, but I stood on what the doctor's report said uh, I had it in my mind because they found a lump on my breast uh, or because there was an issue in my blood uh, I believe what the doctor said uh, and God is saying on tonight uh, yes we're guilty uh, but we're guilty uh, we're guilty of not trusting in him uh, we're guilty of not believing in him uh, we're guilty of wavering in our faith at sort of our uh, we're guilty of not forgiving uh, we're guilty of running uh, we're guilty of going in the tower we're guilty for not fulfilling the assignment, for not fulfilling the purpose that God has spoken of our life. Yes, we are guilty of charge, but he is saying on tonight, there is redemption after the run. There is redemption after the run. There is redemption after the run. And God is saying on tonight, I need many of you to get in a place of repentance on tonight. I need many of you to get in a place and just say, Lord, I'm guilty as charged. But God, the same thing you did for Jonah, you gave him another chance, even in his dark place, even in his grave experience. God, you came, you spoke to Jonah. God will come to where you are. He will come to your dark place. He will come to your valley place. He will come to your place of lullaby. He will come to your place of the low. He will come to your place of darkness, wherever you may be. He is saying, I will meet you in your place. I will meet you just where you are. But I first need you to pull on me. I need you to acknowledge me. I need you to acknowledge what it is that you need to repent for and so he is saying on tonight he is saying on tonight Shannon and Shakima and Jakari and Miss Carolyn he is saying on tonight he is saying there is redemption 
after the rain. And after, and after the rain, after the rain, you should be tired. After the rain, you should just say, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm, I tap out, God. It's your way, God. It's your will, God. Your will be done. Your will be done, God, in the name of Jesus. Your will be done, God. God, I may not understand or I may not see. I may even be afraid, God. But God, the same thing you did for Jonah, you redeemed him. You redeemed Jonah after he ran. Jonah ran from God and he ran because he just did not want to fulfill. He was afraid to speak up against a whole city. He was afraid to speak up against it, about the wickedness and the evil. And so instead of facing the people, instead of facing the backlash, and instead of facing the, the ridicule, and, and instead of facing all, all, all the negativity that may have come with Chona, going before the city and speaking what does said the Lord, Jonah decided to run. And because of his run, some innocent people were caught. But, but, but let me tell you this. But although they were caught up, God, it's no mistakes in God. Because even after, even after you go back to Jonah chapter 1, I believe it's in chapter 11, verse 11. It goes and it says that. After Jonah called out to, to the Lord, after he called out to the Lord, and, and, and the Lord, after they, the, the sailormen, the men on the ship, they tossed them into the sea. The people, the sailors, the people, they worshiped up a whole nother God. They did not worship the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. They worshiped up a whole nother God. So although Jonah ran, although in the beginning of the text of Jonah chapter 1, the beginning of the text, although he ran, those same men that in the beginning that were calling on their God, in the beginning of the storm, in the beginning of the sea, of the, of the, the ocean, the water raving, and uh, the ravishing water in the storm, in the beginning of it, although... Although, although they were calling on their God, by the time Jonah was gone, before he was inside the belly of the whale, those men that were calling on a whole nother God asked Jonah, who is your God? Who is your God that you serve? We want to serve this same God. If this God can cause the, the raven to, see, to, to, to cease. And the text called the sea, the ocean, a her, H-E-R. And if it can cause her to cease, we want to serve this same God. And in that same chapter, chapter one, those same men that were calling on another God. They began, they repent. And they began to call on the name of the Lord. They began, they made vows to our God. And from that day on, they served our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So although Jonah was on the run, in the midst of it, he won some souls. In the midst of this, he won some souls. Have you ever been around people? Have you ever been in a situation that your life is your testimony? All because of your life, they want to say, who is your God? All because of your lifestyle, they want to know, who do you serve? Who do you pray to? What church do you go to? Who is your pastor? They want, they inquired about you. And if you're not there, I need for you to return back to your first love. I need for you to repent. I need for you to say, God, please forgive me on tonight. Because there is redemption after the run. 
There is redemption after the rain. And Shakima Singleton, I hear the Lord saying for you, come. He is saying for you, Shakima, he says, come. He says, I see you. The Lord is showing me you and you are walking and, and you are, it's like you're so, you're so heavy. You're carrying so much on your shoulder. And the Lord is saying for you, Shakima, he is saying for you on tonight. He says, repent. And he says, just, just come to me. He says, just, and, and I, you, I don't know how to repent, Lord. Just forgive me. Lord, forgive me for the things that I've done that wasn't pleasing to you. Denounce some things. Denounce some things because we all are guilty as charge. But on tonight, the Lord want me to let you know that there is redemption after the run. And the same way he redeemed Jonah is the same way he is going to redeem you. He is saying the same way that he spoke to Jonah even in his dark place. So that means to everybody, every one of y'all that's still out there partying, guess what? You can talk to him. If you're still out there getting high, you can talk to him. If you're still out there stripping, you can talk to him. If you're still out there doing what you got to do to survive, you can talk to him. Look, my soul. If he spoke to Jonah in his grave experience, that's how Jonah explained his experience. He explained his experience as a grave experience. Jonah thought he was dead. It's so good of say. He thought he was dead. It's so good of say. Who my mind so good of say. He thought he was dead. And the message Bible, it gets a little more detailed. And it said, Jonah even said. I, I, I thought I was dead. I thought I was at death. It, it says it. <laughs> but even in his dark place, Brenda McKenzie, the spirit of the Lord is saying for you on tonight, I don't want you wavering. I see you. And the Lord is showing me that how, how you're wavering. You're wavering. But the Lord said, I need for you to be like that tree that's planted by the rivers of what? That's planted by the rivers of water. Do not be moved. Do not be moved. Woo, Brenda McKenzie, the Lord is saying, whose report do you believe? And as he's yelling it, he's yelling it. He is yelling it. He's yelling it. He says, I need for you to stand on my word. Stand on my promise. Stand on it. It's all about my mind. It's my mind. So says the spirit of the living God. So do my mind. It's all about my mind. So my mind. See, Kenneth Williams. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying for you on tonight. Kenneth Williams. The spirit of the. I hear more. More. M-O-R-E. And he is showing me it in capital letters. The Lord is saying there is so much more. I, he is showing. I, I see his hand and his hand is full. It's like it's overflowing. It's so much things that he want to give to you. <laughs> But I see with the spirit of the Lord, I see you on this road. 
I see you when you on the straight and narrow road. But I see where something happened. I see a dispute. I see a like an argument. The Lord is showing me an argument, like a major dispute. And this dispute, it, it causes you to win over a little. But the spirit of the Lord just showed me. He just knocked you back in place. It's all over Bansia. He just knocked you back in place. And the spirit of the Lord is saying for you, Kenneth Williams, I need you to get in position and I need you to stay in position. He says, don't you let nothing move you. He says, haven't I saved you times three? He says, haven't I saved you? Times three. It was three. The Lord is saying, haven't I saved you? Times three. Three near-death experiences. And as, as he is showing me this, as he is showing me this, I hear loud like firecrackers. I hear firecrackers. So I said, well, God, is it firecrack? The Lord said, no, it's, it's gunshots. So the Lord said, no, it's gunshots. There is gunshots. And the Lord is saying on tonight, I've saved you. He said, even when you wanted to do wrong, he said, even in the time in your season of your life where you did do what you wanted to do, we all was there. He said, I still, it was still a, a protection around you. He protected you in spite of. And the Lord is saying, don't allow another disagreement to knock you off track. Because all of this that he want to give to you, you can't blame nobody but yourself. You are the delay for what God want to do in your life. And he is saying on tonight, just like Jonah, the grace that he gave Jonah and Jonah spoke to him in his grave experience. It's the same grace that he's given to you, Kenneth Williams. He says, speak to me. I see you smiling. But behind that smile is a whole bunch of tears. Behind that smile is a, a, a man that is kind of broken. But I see where the Lord is putting the pieces back together in your life. <laughs> Even from childhood. But I speak strength into you right now, Kenneth Williams. I speak strength into your mind. And I speak strength into your heart in the name of Jesus. I speak strength. He is saying that smile is going to become a real smile. Kenneth, the smile is going to become a real smile in the name of Jesus. I will give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in me. You want the desires of your heart, but you must first delight yourself in him. You must first delight yourself in him. And he is saying on tonight, Kenneth Williams, the what you're needing, the more that you're needing, you're your biggest holder. Nobody praying against you. Nobody working witchcraft on you. No, it's, not, it's you. There is redemption after the run. And the Lord already told me most of the people that are going to be on here tonight are people that are people in a, 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 a stage of redemption. They need it. They think God has tossed them away. But I'm here to let you know God has not tossed you away. 
and Kenneth, everything you need is right there. It's, I mean, you can touch it. You can grab it. But Kenneth, you got to get in position and you got to stay there. Because another disagreement is coming up. He's allowed me to see. But you know, he does not leave us unaware of the devices of the enemy. So there's going to be another disagreement with the same person. It's like a drama, like some sort of drama, something you and this person It's some sort of drama. I'm not going to get too detailed, but it's drama. It's going to come again. But the Lord is saying, now that you know it is coming, you know what to do. Because what he is saying is the reason why it keeps repeating itself is because you're not learning. You want to stop repeating that? You want to stop going through that? Stop arguing. Stop arguing back. The, I know who the Lord showed me who it is. And I don't know you, but I, the Lord knows you. And he just showed me, he showed me who it is. Stop arguing. And until you learn. And until you learn, until you learn, <laughs> you're going to keep repeating that cycle. Stay in position. Stay in position, Kenneth, so that you can get everything that God has for you, says the spirit of the living God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God in the name of Jesus Kanisha Brown, there is a major contract that's coming your way. And the Lord is saying nobody can stop it. But he says tonight it has to be speaking out into the atmosphere. He said because the time is near. He says the time is near to you, Tanisha. The time is near. This is a major contract. This contract is going to do a lot of shifting in your life. It's going to do a lot of shifting. It's going to shift. It's going to put your whole family in a different position. It's going to put your whole family in a different position. And the Lord is also saying, but read the fine lines clearly. He says, read the fine lines clearly. And also make sure you have an attorney for entertainment. You need an entertainment attorney. Says the spirit of the living God. Now, now, this is what the Lord is saying. Kanisha Brown. What he is saying for you on tonight. Hear this. No one can stop what God is going to do for you in this season. The Lord is saying the next seven years of your life will set you up for the rest of your life. If you be a good stewarder of the finances and of, of the blessings that he is going to give you. Don't cast your pearls to the swine. Do not, just don't spend it foolishly. You will be set up for the rest of your life. If you do, if you, if you handle yourself accordingly, you need to get an entertainment lawyer. So, uh, an entertainment. Because there's a major contract coming to you. And the Lord is saying, read the fine, read everything in the contract. Read it. I'm telling you what the Lord is saying. It's been in your spirit. You feel something is about to happen. And the Lord is saying, yes, what you are feeling is me preparing you for what's ahead of you. You've been feeling like the Lord has been showing me you. And it's like you, you're, you're feeling like you, you're trying to pull away from certain things and certain people. 
It's like you're, it's like you're tunnel vision. It's like you're in a, a lane of your own right now. And a lot of people don't understand. But the Lord is saying it is him that's doing it. It's not even you that's doing it. Because what he need, he needs your mind to be clear. For when this comes, this opportunity comes to you, you won't miss it. Because if your mind is clouded and you have a lot going on, you are going to miss it. Because that's how fast it's going to come. It's going to come that fast. It's going to come so fast that if you're not focused, you will miss it. And the Lord sent me to let you know that there is redemption after the run. Because you have tried to run. You have been wavering. You have put it on the, whatever it is that you have put on the back burner, that's what the Lord has presented before you today, before me today for you. You have been putting it on the back burner for forever. And the Lord is saying, when you wake up, it's what you dream of. When you go to sleep, you're dreaming of that same thing. The Lord says, I have it in you. It's because it's what you are supposed to do. That's why you can't rest. That's why you don't understand. Every time you close your eyes, you dream it. When you wake up in the morning, it's on your mind. It's because it's what he has called you to do. It's what he has chosen for you to do. You got to be focused. Don't let nothing distract you. Every time you feel like something about to start, you rebuke it. And you send it back to the pits of hell immediately. Immediately, because it, it want to distract you. But the Lord says, no distraction. 11 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. Begin to write. Begin to write. I already see you writing. The Lord is already showing me you writing. Write. Write everything you hear the Lord say. I don't care it, it may even if you don't understand, write. You've got to write. Write the vision and make it plain. Write the vision and make it plain. Says the Spirit of the Living God. And if you don't have a vision board, Kanisha, do you a vision board? And on your vision board, put everything that you want the Lord to do. I am a witness that He will do it says the spirit of the living God for you. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. If you're on, just tell me you're here. In the name of Jesus. 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 The Lord has released on tonight the Jonah, the Jonah's uh, uh, anointing. Uh, the same grace, the Jonah's grace. The same grace he gave Jonah is the same grace he has given us on tonight. And he wants you to know that there is redemption after the run. There is redemption after the run. There is redemption after the run. Mika, Tamika Richardson. The spirit of the Lord is saying for you, Tamika, repent. Repent. He says, return to me, Mika. Return to me, Mika. Return to me, Mika. I, I, as the Lord is showing me you, Mika, it's, it's like you're shaking, like your hands are shaking because your nerves are bad. But the Lord is saying on tonight, Give it all to him and come back to the place of peace. Come back to the place of rescue. Come back to the place of redemption. Come back. Come back, Mika. Come back. And once you get back in that place, things will begin to line back up for you. They will line back up. They will line back up. Says the spirit of the living God for you. Says the spirit of the living God. 
It was someone name I just seen. Nakisha Johnson. I believe I'm saying your name right. Nakisha Johnson. The Lord is saying on tonight. Do not have an abortion. Do not abort the baby. And it's not a natural, it's spiritual. The Lord is showing me. He is showing me you. And he is showing me some other things. But the Lord is saying, don't you have an abortion, baby. Don't you have an abortion. Don't you abort the baby. You have had a, enough uh, 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 miscarriages and stillborns. Because it's, it's like I, the Lord is showing me you. And as the Lord is showing me you, I just see you standing in a whole bunch of blood. So I said, well, Lord, is this natural or is this spiritual? The Lord said, this is a spiritual abortion. It's like you start and then you stop. I see you starting and then you stop. But the Lord says, this, you shall finish what you started in this season. This shall be the season that you complete every, everything that he has given you. You shall complete it. You shall complete it. And he says, watch who you allow in your air gates. There are people that you are allowing in your air gates. And he is saying, watch who you allow in your air gates. Watch who you allow in your air gates. Because let me tell you. They will say, oh, don't do this. Or you shouldn't do it like that. And then go behind your back and talk about you not even finishing it. Don't you abort another baby in this season. Whatever you started, you shall finish it. I speak the finisher's anointing over you in the name of Jesus. If you need some encouragement, if you need guidance, whatever you may need, you inbox me and baby, I will, I will push you. Ooh, mine so good up I say. I will push you. I honor you, Prophet Timothy Newton. I honor you, man of God. And I will push you. But you cannot abort another baby in this season. Says the spirit of the living God. A lot of your fight, your money. The Lord is showing me your money. A lot of your money is tied up in the ideas. And the visions that he has given you. But because. But because you. It's like you need validation. But the Lord is saying on tonight. The only validation you need. Is the validation of the vision. And the idea he gave you. If he gave it to you. It's because he wants you. He has given you the. You are fully equipped. To do what the Lord has chosen for you to do. Fully equipped. You are lacking nothing. Nothing. You are lacking absolutely nothing. Nakisha Johnson. You are lacking absolutely nothing. Everything you need. You, you have it right here on the inside. And see some of us just need somebody just to push us. We just need somebody just to help us give birth and to help catch that baby. To help catch. We, some of us need midwives. That's what you need. You need a midwife. And what midwives do is midwives, midwives will stand there through the whole process. And will help you deliver your baby safely. And that's what a lot of you need on tonight. Because you feel like there is a no redemption after the run. There is a no redemption after you've been. You got lost or, or wrapped up in whatever. There is redemption after the run. And if he spoke to Jonah and his grave experience 
and his death experience when he was inside the well, the belly of a well. If he spoke to him then, what makes you think God would not speak to you in your dark place? When he spoke to me, I was at the strip club. When he spoke to me, he said, girl, you got to get right. There's work for you to do. That's where I was. That's when I made up in my mind. Okay, no more of this. I, let me try God. Let me try him for real. Let, I, I don't want to play like it. I want to be for real about it. And I can honestly say, openly, because I'm transparent, because y'all need to know that just because you say yes today doesn't mean you're going to wake God is able. It doesn't mean you're going to wake up and everything is going to be gone away tomorrow. No. But let me tell you this. I can honestly say I've messed up in these last two and a half years that I've been saved for real. I've messed up. But even in my low place, even in my grave experience, even in my mess ups, I called on God and he spoke to me. So the grace he gave Jonah is the grace he gave me. And it's the same grace he's going to give you. But you just, yes, kid, you got to trust your process. You got to trust even though I am here. <laughs> he, he, he will get down low. He will get so low. He will get low with you. And guess what? Why he's low. He, why you're low, he's pulling you up. He's raising up your head and sticking out your chest. And he's reminding you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He is reminding you that there's greater in you. He's reminding you that you are the head and not the tail. He's reminding you that you are more than a conqueror. He is reminding you that greater is he that is in you. Greater. He is reminding you that you shall do greater works. It's so no say. He is reminding you. <laughs> yeah, you right here. But I see what's ahead. I see what's ahead. And sometimes he allow us to stay a little while longer <laughs> just to keep building our faith. <laughs> and sometimes just so his name can keep getting the glory. We will always have that issue. We will always have that struggle. But let me tell you this. The same way he spoke to Jonah in his grave experience as the Bible described, as Jonah described it in his prayer. Jonah chapter 2. If you read the message Bible, it can break it down to you a whole lot better and you can understand it more than the King James or the Amplified, the message Bibles of more 21st century. And the same way he heard Jonah in his dark place. It's the same way. He will hear you. I need everybody who can. Sow a seed of 111. 111. 111 are 21. 111 are 21. 111 are 21. It's just something about that wholeness. That one is represents oneness. It represents wholeness. That, that's, that's why, for the wholeness, for the oneness, so things can be, get in alignment. No, God don't need our money, but what, what, what it is, is it's, it's, a, it's a seed. You're just obeying the prophet at this point because the word has went forth. Sow a seed of 111 or 21. 111. Uh, 21 and this seed is just your alignment seed this seed is yeah I messed up yeah I may be in my grave experience but me and God we still here we're still here even though I may not understand even though I mean I'm in this dark place me and God we still what 
we are so one. And for Carolyn Desiree King, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying for you, um, Carolyn Desiree King. Carolyn Desiree, I think I'm saying Desiree King. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying for you on tonight. He is saying for you on tonight. Okay, I see you running. I see you running. <laughs> But it's like I see you chasing yourself. Thank you, prophetess. I see you chasing yourself. So I'm like, God, what does that mean? And the Lord says, you're, it's like your, 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 your spirit, your spirit man is trying to catch up. Your natural man is trying to catch up with your spirit man. Your spirit man is here, but your natural man is like trying to catch up. And God says, if you begin to just turn some things away and turn down some things, you will begin to see the growth. You will begin to see things growing. Because with a, with a caterpillar, a caterpillar will either turn into a butterfly or either it will die. So the Lord says, choose what you want to do. Either you want to live or you want to turn into a beautiful butterfly. Those are the two choices. And when I see you, I see you in that form of a caterpillar. I see you in that form. And the Lord is saying, either you're going to, the caterpillar either, either die or they turn into a beautiful butterfly. So what is it that you want to turn into? What is it that you want? To everybody that's sewing, make sure you inbox me because I, I want to call you personally. I want to call you personally. And you want to be a beautiful butterfly, you can be that. But I need you to hear me. Everybody that you have in your company is not really your company. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody that you have in your company is not really your company. And I don't even see a real big circle. You feel stuck. What do you feel stuck about? What do you feel stuck about? Because the Lord is showing me you're running. You're running. But the Lord is saying on tonight. I don't know your relationship with God, but I do know you're like Jonah. You're running. You're running. And uh, everything spiritually. Okay. It makes sense to why your natural man is trying to catch up with your spirit man. But I speak right now in the name of Jesus that you shall come out in the name of Jesus. I speak right now to your mind in the name of Jesus. I speak to that generational, uh, uh, to the generational bloodline. It's so cool by Bansi in the name of Jesus that don't want to let go at so cool Bansi. But I dismantle it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I send it back to the pits of hell in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak. Speak right now, Carolyn Desiree King, that you shall be set free. I speak right now that you are no longer bold, but I'm bondage, you hostage by the bondage. I speak right now that every tie, soul tie, generational tie, every, every, everything you may have tampered in, you got to denounce some things. You got to denounce some things because sometimes we can tamper in things not knowing what we're tampering in. You have to denounce some things. The chains are broken. They are breaking in the name of Jesus. They are breaking off of you. I see the chains breaking off of your mind. Wherever you are tonight, Carolyn, I need for you to just call on Jesus. Begin to call on him. Begin to call on him in the name of Jesus. Begin to denounce the witchcraft. Begin to denounce the candles. Begin to denounce the sage. Begin to denounce the, the energy bracelets. Begin 
begin to denounce everything that's not of God. Begin in the name of Jesus uh, to denounce the dirt. Begin to denounce it. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I break the, the, the back of witchcraft that may be trying to keep her hostage. I break the back of witchcraft in the name of Jesus that may be trying to keep her in bondage. Yet I'm so Denounce it to Carolyn. Denounce it wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Every witch, every warlock, that may be tried to let there be a stirring in her stomach in the name of Jesus. Purge it all up in the name of Jesus. Purge it up in the name of Jesus. A breaking, a breaking in the name of Jesus, a breaking, yet I'm a breaking in the name of Jesus, a breaking, yet I'm so out of a bunsaya, yet I'm so it stops here, it stops now, it stops tonight, it will not go on to your children, to your children's children. I dismantle it now in the name of Jesus. Purge her, God, purge her, God. Purge her God of every unclean spirit. Purge her God of every unclean thing, God. Even the things she didn't have no knowledge of. Purge her God. Purge her God in the name of Jesus. Purge her God in the name of Jesus, God. Purge her God in the name of Jesus. It stops now, it stops tonight. It will not go to your children. It will not go to your grandchildren or your great grand and generations down the line. It stops tonight. I command the witch to blow out her candle. I command the witch to blow out her candle. I command the witch to blow out her candle right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you shall give birth. You shall give birth. You shall give birth, says the Spirit of the living God in the name of Jesus. 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 Carolyn, we are talk off air. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. God, you are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. In the name of Jesus, you are worthy, God. In the name of Jesus, you are worthy, God. I command the witch to blow out her candles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sheila Johnson, in the name of Jesus. I hear the spirit of the Lord says for you. Um, Sheila Johnson, um, the Lord is showing me where he is going to begin to uh, uh, change your appetite. You're going, he's going to begin to change your appetite. You're going to begin to have an appetite for God and the things of God. Um, 100% of God. Um, you're going to begin to have an appetite for him. It's like you're going to begin to wake up and you're going to want to know more about God. You're going to, you're, you're going to want to, you're going to want to wait. You're going to wake up and it's like, you're just going to want to know more. You're, it's going to be like a, a craving on the inside of you. It's going to be a craving on the inside of you. And the Lord is saying on tonight, he is saying on tonight in the name of Jesus. He is saying on tonight in the name of Jesus to you. He is saying on tonight. <laughs> he is saying on tonight. <laughs> And it's trust me, it's not weird that I'm talking and stopping because it's like that's what you that's it's like that's what you do as in you will you will you will start and then you will stop. It's like something will hold you. 
It's like something will hold you. Something will hold you in the name of Jesus. But the spirit of the Lord is saying on tonight, um, begin to read Psalms 91. Um, begin to read Psalms 91, um, says the spirit of the Lord. I'm, a, I'm going to be wise and get off. Um, I want to be wise and get off because the Lord is showing me some stuff. And I got to be wise in this season. But I need for everybody that can sow that 111 or that 21 to go ahead and sow the, the, the cash up information is at the bottom. And I also need for each and every one of you that do so to inbox me personally so that we can pray together. So that we can pray together. Um, and I just praise God right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your word on tonight, God. We thank you for everyone that came out and to, to listen on tonight, God. Now, God, as you did what only you can do, God, we say thank you. We bind up backlash. We bind up retaliation. And every word that's been spoken on tonight, God, it shall spring forth. It shall go forth, God. There is your, your people know that there is redemption after the run. And they know that even after they've run, even in their dark place, even in their low place, that you will come and speak to them just as you did uh, jo um, Jonah inside the well of the belly as he described his grave experience, his death. That's, just, that's how he described it. And you will come even on our deathbed, even when we don't feel like pressing on God. You will come and blow your breath into our lungs, God. And for that, we say thank you. I thank each and every one of you for coming on, on tonight. Um, to join us live on tonight. God bless you. Bless you, Dr. Shakira McFadden. I don't know if you're still on, but God bless you. Um, I love you guys and talk with you later. Bye.